anybody who knows Oliver knows what I'm talking about, you know, you will learn to have a stance. Like you said, a rock against the wind. You go up against anything once you've been tutored by Oliver. This is one poem that Oliver critiqued and was published in a little newspaper there at Oberlin College. And 40 years ago, an American Army lieutenant named Callie went into a village that allegedly had Viet Cong, it's in Vietnam, the enemy, the communists. Um, his platoon slaughtered 400 men, women, and children. Some of them were elderly and some of the women were pregnant. And this was my response almost a decade after I returned from Southeast Asia. Barbecued cones, or we laid me lie low. At me lie, we left limp for longs, feathered with frameless, wingless birds, barbecued and bodiless heads of hair, hanging from the charcoal gauges of burnt huts, rice thin hides, harbored flesh flailing pellets, unregenerative crops trigger grown from the trunks of branchless mechanical trees as barbecue grills grew hotter with ghost hot heat. Mothers cooked children and causes in the grease of blood glazed breasts, resigned in the weighty whisper that one can only die once. Cannon cut me lie into fleshy confetti, pellet potted half cooked carcasses curing in rice wine. Rat tat tat of an idea. Souvenirs for patron saints presiding over oil wells. Flat face down in the mud like some unclaimed, unnamed, yet undreamt dream. While miniature machine gun mines make with mole holes on the muddy highway of swamp or swampless night. Westward whore, hear ye, hear ye, a declaration of undeclared causes, a preamble to constipation and conscription, dare we overcome, even arrive, slightly begin, entertain thoughts, go forth against grains, before mornings unfold. My land me lie, puppet shows and portable pentagods soar or sneak from Saigon. Shine came on deck of the mine this morning and said, there's a sag in the nation's middle. Which way extends the natal card, north or south? I lay down my life for Mila and Harlem. I lay down my burden in Timbuktu, Baltimore, and East St. Lou. We waited long and low, like low strung studs for Mila, when we reared and rammed her with spark sperm spitting penises, then withdrew westward 6,000 miles a Pacific coffin of the mind between us to vex canned good consciences and claim the Fifth Amendment. Mm -hmm. Another poem written during the time that uh, Oliver I, and I act, were active with teachers, scholars, um, communing, commiserating. In this case, commiserating. You read Oliver's background, foreground, front ground, and you find out that Sharpville, Sharpville, Google that, was, is on his mind. This is the poem that I wrote 
in response to Oliver's Sharpville series. Sharp song, Sharpville song, steel song, steam song. Mechanical sharpshooters, villains, reload lightning sticks that mutter, sputter, harsh spark language at hungry flesh huddled in the streets. Sharpville song, Sharpville symphony, harpoons through bodies, slaughterhouse bunched, sagging from blood dirt dampness, lagging behind life, given up to lore, to folk gossip and handlers of decaying human decor. Sharp shooters singing now from pompous books, word barrages, automatic elocutionists, sugar fields of flesh holes, journalists and jurists trotting in high breed grace across conscience courts, pantomiming gods, ghouls, and meandering in mouthwash. Sharpville knowing now that ancestral bowmen will blow dart a deed for deed vengeance, that underneath trees jujuers sing sharp rap as sharp villains chop at natal cars, try to break birthing nate nationhood. With swords of technology, mindless slashes, with knives of false knowledge, Sharpville sting rings in earth belly for black justice, for redemption of unprovoked suffering, of unasked for death. And love. Um, Oliver and I used to go out a lot. We were 29 miles from the nearest uncivilization at Oberlin. <laughs> so we would drive to Cleveland to check out things. There's nothing between Oberlin and Cleveland, but the turnpike, and um, we enjoyed it. A uh, lot of love in the world, a lot of love in this house. And uh, so here's a love poem. I can never unlove you. To not want is to not exist, is to be demanded is to be disempersoned, is to be disembodied and float like an apparition into the nunware, into the gray whim of limbo. And that is why I can never unlove you, why I can never dismantle my fashion why I can never decompose my desire. To reel in my cautious need is to be unclumsy in hyperposture, is to be a cursed garden, growthless, is to be made breathless by outside strictures and nod and noon sun like a drunken lizard, a slitherless drip on the echo of love, on the back of some nomadic breeze, on the coattail of sanity. And that is why I can never unlove you, why I can never unnotice the flames you forge, why I can never unloose my eyes from their aim. I can never unlove you, though I can re-love you before another moon. I can never unneed you, though I can re-grieve the night-stained caresses. I can never not want you, though I can re-cry the ancientest ocean. 
I can never unlove you. Unlove you never. Unlove you never. Unlove you, bag, New York series, never. <laughs>